after the whirlwind launch of Android 13 Developer Preview 1, we've been diving even further into this first build of the upcoming OS to find some hidden gems and brand new features you wouldn't even know existed. So let's go hands on again. Thanks for watching 95 Google here on YouTube. Remember to thumbs up, hit subscribe, and then tap the bell icon to be among the first to watch our upcoming videos. Android 13 is set to bolster the multi-user experience with more tools to quickly create and manage more than one profile on your device at a time. And this could be due to Google's increased focus on Android tablets, but it could be especially useful to parents or those even wanting work and personal profiles on their devices and keeping those separate. In Android 13, we've seen early work on a new UI that has an updated lock screen profile switcher for quick switching between these. If you happen to have multiple profiles on a device and begin the unlock process from that lock screen that is, you'll see a profile picture at the top of the screen with a name underneath. Clicking on the name will reveal a drop down list with all of the profiles you've created or that exist on your device. This looks like it could streamline the process of quickly switching between accounts, but it is easy to see this feature is currently in an unfinished state with the arrow indicating the drop down list sometimes just not appearing correctly and not actually expanding the user list in some other cases. Despite being buggy though, this is certainly a welcome improvement as it's far more prominent and obvious that you're able to switch profiles on your device. By default, Android's profile switch on the lock screen only shows a small icon at the top corner of the display without any obvious indicator to show that the profile itself can be switched. So we're really, really looking forward to seeing this one develop. Another new addition it seems that we'll see in Android 13 is called Tap to Transfer. And this will allow you to switch playback or move audio between any compatible devices just by moving your phone or tablet closer to that specific audio output system. This mimics a feature that exists on iOS devices and allows you to quickly move playback from a HomePod speaker that is. It works seamlessly over iOS and we're interested to see just how this feature will work in practice within Android 13. At this stage, we haven't actually been able to test this feature out, as you can imagine, but it could be an incredible way to quickly move audio and continue playback elsewhere. The tap naming implies it may rely on something like NFC to talk to speakers. And while Apple uses UWB to accomplish this task, it what's even more interesting here is that Google's current generation speakers, such as the Nest Audio and the Nest Mini, don't actually support either of those technologies. Another feature not yet live or even functional in Android 13 Developer Preview 1 is the app by app language control option. In an upcoming build alongside your system language, it seems you'll be able to set the language of each app installed upon your phone. Of course, from the very outset, this is designed for those that speak multiple languages or even specific dialects in mind. With some apps, they may work best in English or another language. Other apps may feel more native or even prove to work better in a different language. At the moment in Android 12 and older, almost all apps are forced to the system wide language selection so this new setting would make it easier for everyone, developers included, to support more than one language on a device at a time. Android 12L is going to provide some noted and needed improvements for larger Android displays, but Android 13 is set to add a few more here to the default Pixel launcher. Firstly, there is the new ability to have multiple home screen layouts on your phones, and this is likely to be added for foldable devices, which have an inner and outer display respectively. We can see this in action by changing the DPI on your own device from its default state to one that triggers the big screen features that were introduced with 12L, including the taskbar. When the detected screen DPI is actually smaller, your original pixel launcher layout sticks around. When the DPI is adjusted or increased to a new layout, that will kick in and appear on your screen. And this would make sense given that most outer displays are smaller than the inner unfolded panels. What's more important here is that when removing an app or folder from the big screen version, it will still remain in place when we switch back to the original DPI and then back to the big screen version, showing the layouts are remembered. It is not as perfect as it might seem though, as there are bugs that see some random apps return or even randomly restore, but it is a feature that mimics the Z Fold 3 and One UI's current two layout implementation that is used on their devices. That's not the only change though that we're expecting for larger displays in this upcoming build. It seems that the taskbar introduced in Android 12L is also going to support six slots as of Android 13, which is an increase of one from five slots available in the current Android 12L beta release. Google has made, made it such that you're forced to use six app slots though within the taskbar, any removals will initiate an app suggestion from your recent app or recent apps that is, or one that Android thinks you'll use or like. You can turn off these suggestions though within the pixel launcher settings, which will leave these slots empty 
But at present, the rotor itself shifted over and will shift over to account for that. And it looks as weird as it sounds, but it is a new Android 13 feature that will likely get more attention as these previews do progress. Directly tied to Android 13 though is a new cross device service, which will let you effectively stream your phone to a Chrome OS device. What we didn't expect though, is exactly how this will work in practice. Rather than simply just mirroring your Pixel's current screen as we kind of expected this to work, it actually seems that Etche, which is this service running, creates a second virtual display for your phone. This second display is where your messaging apps will appear. This means you can have an app open on your Chromebook without actually disrupting any apps running on your phone's main screen. Within Android 13, it seems that this feature will be tailored more towards messaging apps than rather being aimed at directly at the general applications on your phone, as your Pixel just generates that entirely separate virtual display and then it streams to your laptop or desktop, rather than just mirroring your phone as we kind of expected it would. And this second display is where your messaging apps will appear. This means you can have an app open on your laptop or desktop, as we mentioned, without disrupting any apps currently running on your phone and therefore making this a great option for people who like to use multiple messaging apps and maybe don't like using the Chrome OS variant. With Android 13, it also appears that it's actually possible to run Windows 11 on the Pixel 6, for instance, using a virtual machine. That's incredible, but how is this even possible? Well, Android 13 features better handling of virtualization, and that is one of the core reasons that this is actually, actually capable. The latest OS supports a common hypervisor in the form of KVM, a kernel-based virtual machine. The short version and the less technical version is this means more consistent experiences when creating virtual machines on your devices more so than was actually possible in previous Android builds. Therefore, we're at this stage where Windows 11 virtual machines can actually run on Pixel 6, which with pretty impressive results. Danny Lin, aka K Dragon, the developer behind this impressive feat, even had Doom running on his Pixel 6 via the phone's Windows VM, and it's actually pretty glorious. So you'll have to little, take a little look at this clip to see it in action. So there's a few extra, probably more than surface level changes that we found in Android 13 Developer Preview 1, but the extended selection here includes some features that might not be developed too much further over the coming weeks and months, or maybe will get more attention as we see things develop in time. Naturally, we do expect to see more little things that are hidden and slip through the cracks over the coming days and weeks though, and we will let you know should we see them. We wanna know what is your favorite new feature of these extras? or are you just happy to see things develop and be tuned over time? Let us know down in the comment sections below, but until next time, as always, this is Damien with 9to5Google saying thanks for watching, and I will speak to you later.